G'day viewers, I'm Chris. This is The Creative Space. How about we head on over to the workbench and get creative. Alrighty, here we are again at the workbench, ready to do some creativity. Uh, today we're going to be doing a uh, commemorative lantern. Um, down here in Australia, we have Anzac Day coming up on April the 25th, which is when we uh, remember those uh, men and women who have fought and are fighting in wars. So you're going to need a few things for this uh, project today. Um, what you're going to need, a pair of scissors, um, you're going to need some paint pens. Now these I've just picked up from our local Kmart. Uh, you might be able to pick them up from a craft store around you. Uh, but um, yeah, they're, they're really good to use. Uh, you could also use Sharpies as well for this project. Uh, you're going to also need a two litre milk bottle or milk, yeah, milk bottle, a hot glue gun, and uh, the templates. These are from a website called Clever Patch, and I'll leave a link to that down in the description where you can download them from. Or you can do this project purely um, freehand if, if you want to as well. So the templates will be there in case you need those. The other thing you'll need is a some kind of battery light. Now I picked this up from Kmart as well for a couple of dollars uh, but you could use the little battery candles uh, that you often see around but please remember this project uh, isn't to use real flame candles. Uh, of course the plastic's going to melt if you use a real candle in there so please use battery operated light all right, so the first thing that we need to do, and as you've already seen, I've marked it out. I just thought it'd be a good idea to leave the handle on the milk carton so that you can hold the lantern. Uh, so if you're at a dawn service, you know, it's easy to hold on to, uh, but you then can place it down, of course, as well. Uh, I've just uh, put a mark around this so that it it cuts that top threaded part off and then opens up the front so you can easily put in a battery lantern into it. Uh, not sure how much uh, height I've given that. I've just guesstimated it so um, you can figure out how much uh, you want to leave there. Maybe you want to make it higher or shorter. Uh, now kids, if you're going to be doing this, please uh, get an adult to help you with this next part. And adults, please be careful uh, with this as well because, you know, uh, jabbing the scissors into here can be, can be uh, harmful. So anyway, we'll just poke a hole into uh, the milk bottle and then it's simply a matter of cutting out uh, this part. to uh, start putting our design on it and um, like I said we're using the paint markers to put the design on but uh, look use sharpies if that's all you've got and you'll get a similar effect. Uh, the templates that you can download off of the Clever Patch website um, there's the silhouette of a soldier, uh, the sun uh, and what you do is you just cut these out put them on the inside of the milk container and then trace around them. There's also the poppies as well, the images. I'm not sure if I'm going to use these. I might just do them freehand. And then you've got the mountain um, as well, uh, which has also been used for an Easter craft. So um, yeah, basically we're just going to cut them out and then place them inside of the milk carton, the milk bottle. Uh, and then 
trace around them basically with the, with the paint marker. So you don't have to be too neat uh, cutting these out uh, because they're basically just used to trace. So I'll just cut this one out and uh, I don't really need this long bit on so I'll just cut that off as well and see how that goes into the bottle. Yep, I think I'll stick it at the front. Just remember uh, placement of things and your design and what's going to be showing uh, at the front and back, etc. Um, you could use sticky tape to just stick that in there to stop it falling, but I think I'll grab some blue tack uh, just to put on there and uh, just a couple of little spots if I can actually get any out of here. Um, there we go. So I'll just put a couple of spots of it on the figure. And then place it on the inside. And then it's just a matter of using the paint marker. So we'll use the black just to outline everything first. And um, I'm not sure how it's going to go with the thicker nib. Remember to shake your paint pen up as well. And uh, if you haven't used it for a while or if it's new, make sure that you push the nib down to get the, the paint out. Yeah, so with the thicker nib, I'm not sure how it will go, but anyway, we'll give it a shot. Now, as I said, Sharpies, use, use them if that's all you've got. Uh, the paint pens, though, do give a, uh, a much more vibrant finish to uh, the project. So just trace around here. And look, you could do this with anything really, like it doesn't just have to be for Anzac Day, it can be, you can paint whatever kind of designs on it and use them in your outdoor area. Uh, so that's the silhouette done. Again, you can maybe you want to put a couple of soldiers silhouettes on it. This is purely just what my design is and you're more than free to do your own designs if that's what you'd like to do. Uh, now you might notice the rosemary sitting here on the bench top. Uh, we also use rosemary sprigs as part of remembrance, um, especially for Gallipoli uh, because there were rosemary bushes there. Um, and of course the poppies are used for Remembrance Day in November, but we also use the poppies uh, on Anzac Day as part of remembering. So I'm just going to cut these poppies out now and as I said I don't know if I really want to use these actually. I mean if you want to use them that's good. Um, but I just don't think, I just don't feel like they're simplified enough uh, to trace around a lot of them. Um, I think I'll yeah, they're fairly, like there's lots of lines on there, which, you know, might look really good. If you've got a fine paint marker, then yeah, give it a shot. So I think I'm just going to use the one, the more defined poppy uh, that's there, but the others are all yeah, I think I think for the design that I'm looking at, it it would be a bit too too many, and so I think I'll just do them draw draw them freehand. So I'll just uh, trace around this one anyway to get a start. And uh, yeah, I think I'll I'll just do it do the rest freehand. Um, and place them. But look, if if you find it hard doing freehand stuff, then just use the template, um, which makes it a bit easier. At least you get the petals kind of all the same. So I'll put 
two there. I think I'll put uh, yeah, just one here. I think I'll leave the back and do the mountain and sun on the back. So if I do, I think, three here, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to do one near the soldier as well, just to fill in that space that's there. Yep. Uh, that was a bit monkey, anyway. <laughs> just shows that uh, not it's not always perfect. And hey, it doesn't have to be. It's all about having fun and creating. So now on this back part, I think I will. I'm just going to do it freehand, the mountain part, uh, rather than using the template because it's a fairly easy curved line. I'm going to have a mountain coming down there and then another one going up the other side, maybe just a bit lower. And then in between the two, I'll uh, do a sun that's rising and just for a bit of added um, design I'll just put some sun rays coming up out of the sun and apologies again for being out of view when I'm doing that I need a bigger desk space. So there we go, that's um, the design. We've got poppies and a soldier and we've got uh, the mountains. So that's our design and really the next step is just to colour in all the designs. Um, I'm going to just colour the, the silhouette in black because after all the sun is rising we're kind of standing behind the soldier so they'd be in darkness um, and rather than you watching me in real time color in uh, this next part I will speed up and meet you back when it's all done love watching it back when in speed it looks really good so there we go there's our design um, the poppies and soldier silhouette on the front sunrise on the back um, and just wait for the paint pens to dry a bit more uh, you probably wouldn't have noticed it but I did smudge one as I was coloring in but uh, yeah so that's that's the design and as I said you can design however you 
you like. Um, don't feel that you need to copy the one that I've done. In fact, I'd like to uh, see your designs if you want to post them up. That would be that would be great. Uh, now we just have to finish it off and uh, by writing on here lest we forget there we go now it's complete so the next thing that we need to do is to put the light inside and um, if you're using the hot glue gun then uh, please be careful with that uh, kids you may want to get uh, an adult to help you with it so this uh, light bulb that I the camping light bulb that I got um, did have a hook on so I had to cut the hook off the base so it would sit flat and I'll just put some glue on the end here and then as you can see it's pretty hot um, and I'll just rest it in here to cool down and hopefully the glue won't melt the plastic on the bottom and that should nearly be right I reckon yep there we go all nice and firm in there and uh, the switch is accessible on the side and there we go there's our commemorative lantern and uh, I might just switch the light off there doesn't really do anything uh, but I'll take another video clip of it with it being a bit darker but it's very effective um, and you know as I said I'd love to see what designs you will come up with and you can post them either here on our Facebook page uh, so there we go and if you're going to a dawn service um, then take it along and uh, hope you've enjoyed today's project well that pretty much wraps up today's episode with a nice shiny ribbon uh, how about you hit that bell so you get notified of any new clips that are put up uh, also appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button as well so until next time remember that every day is a good day to be creative see ya